Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming, tech, news, and reviews. In today's video, I'm going over the very first thing you should do whenever you get a brand new Raspberry Pi. Let's get started. The first thing you want to do when you get a new Raspberry Pi is update the firmware. It's not very difficult, but a lot of people never update the firmware in the Raspberry Pi and as a result, never get the best performance possible. I'll try to go over this as quick as possible, but if you already have an operating system on your Raspberry Pi and you can open a terminal window, I will leave a timestamp in the description below so you can just click on that, jump ahead to see what commands to enter. If you don't have an operating system already installed on the Raspberry Pi, then I'll go over these steps right now. First thing you want to do is head over to raspberrypi.org, go to downloads, I will leave a link to this in the description below and you want to pick up the Raspberry Pi imager for whatever operating system you're running on your main computer. Once you have the imager installed and ready to go and up and running, you have to plug the micro SD card into the computer. If you have a slot for the micro SD card or an SD card, then you're in luck. If you don't, you will need some sort of adapter in order to plug the micro SD card in. And I will leave a link to the one I use in the description below. It's got a slot here for a micro SD card and a slot for an SD card, and it works very well. So all I have to do is just plug this into the adapter, plug this into my USB port, and I'm good to go. Once you have the micro SD card plugged into your computer, select Choose OS in the Raspberry Pi imager. Now, depending on when you're watching this video, you might have an option here for a 64-bit version of the Raspberry Pi OS, in which case I would recommend choosing that version if you have a Raspberry Pi 4 or newer. In this video, I'm using the 32-bit OS because that's all that's available right now. Once you select this, go to Choose SD Card and select the SD card that you just plugged into the computer. If you're just updating the firmware, you can get away with an 8GB or a 16GB micro SD card, but if you plan on doing more with your Raspberry Pi, I always recommend at least a 32GB Class 10 micro SD card. That way you'll have a lot of room for whatever applications, whatever you're doing, because these micro SD cards fill up fast. Now that you've selected your operating system, your micro SD card, the next thing to do is to click right. Once this is done, you can plug the micro SD card into your Raspberry Pi and boot it up. Once you've booted up your Raspberry Pi, make sure you are connected to the internet in some way, shape, or form, either by Ethernet or by Wi-Fi or whatever other way you can connect to the internet. Just make sure your Pi is connected to the internet and then follow the startup procedure here. One of the last steps of the initial setup is to update the software. Make sure to click next here and not skip. Once you've completed the initial setup procedure, just restart your system. From here, I'm going to open a terminal window. The very first command I want to run is to see if I need to update my firmware. And that command is sudo or sudo, depending on how you want to say it, rpi-eeprom-update. And what this will do is it will automatically detect to see if you need to update your firmware. Now, fortunately for me, it says mine is up to date. If yours is not up to date, I will show you the commands on what to do next. The next command is to run an update and an upgrade. I will leave this command in the description below. Once everything is updated and ready to go, the last command is to install the latest firmware. During this step, it's extremely important not to turn off your Raspberry Pi as it will be installing brand new firmware. For me, or if you have updated your firmware recently, it will give you this message here saying you do have the newest version. If it is updating, just wait for it, let it take its time, and afterwards it will prompt you to restart the Raspberry Pi, and then you're pretty much good to go. Regardless of whether or not you've done this before, from time to time firmware is released for the Raspberry Pi, and it's always healthy to check to see if you do have the latest version. And aside from those tips, you're pretty much good to go and start having fun with your Raspberry Pi. That is all I've got for today. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.